Good evening, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. I'm a tad late today getting going or this week, but I've had a few things to do. But um, the first thing I want to do is we want to get our potato flake uh, sourdough starter going. And we're going to do part one today where we mix it up, and then we have to let it sit on the counter for three days. Then you put it in the refrigerator three to five days. Let me see. No. So the first thing that we do is we get it all mixed up and we let it set out on the counter for 24 hours. Then we're going to put it in the ice box for three days. Then we're going to bring it back out and feed it and start our process of making bread. So the first thing you need to do is just make this simple starter, set it out 24 hours, put it in the ice box for three days, and I'll have another video out in three days telling you what to do next. So, the starter consists of one package of yeast. And do y'all know that from King Arthur you can get a measuring spoon that is the exact amount that's in a package of yeast? And it makes it so handy to buy yeast in bulk and just use that measuring spoon. So I've got my yeast right here. I've got a cup of warm water, three-fourths of a cup of sugar, and I should have put that in something else because I want it all to go in there. But this is just for the starter. You don't feed it this much sugar when you start making your bread with it. Put my yeast in. And I'm going to give that a good stir and mix it up. Try to dissolve that sugar real good. And after today, you don't use yeast anymore. You just use your potato flakes. And that, uh, when they ferment, that makes the rise in the bread. And you need a designated jar, especially if you've got two or three different types of sourdough going. So I'm using this dark amber jar that they had out for a year or so back, the color that you could buy from Ball for special things. And that's what I like to use them for, is ferments or my sourdough mixes or something like that. And then we're going to add in four tablespoons of potato flakes into the original starter. So I'm going to put part one on the video uh, title, and then when you see part two, that's that's when I'm making my my bread, and um, it will be synchronized if y'all do it the same amount of time that I do. So then it's not going to hurt if yours has been a little bit longer. But after five days in the fridge, it has to be fed. So I'm gonna. Uh, I've got mine mixed up really well, and I'm just going to put it a lid of, I've got some little bonnets for the jars that I'm going to put on it, but you can just put a loose fitting lid on it and set it out on the counter for 24 hours. And then so tomorrow evening, I'm going to put it in the ice box, and tomorrow is Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to pull it back out and feed it. And the, and the deal is this, you, you pull it out of the ice box and you feed it. 12 hours later, you use a cup of it and you make your bread. And you let it rise for 12 hours. And then you divide it into three loaves and you let that rise 12 hours and bake it. So it's 12 hour increments and you end up with three loaves of bread. Then back into the ice box for two or three days and do the same thing again. So I'm going to put it over here and let mine ferment and um, I'll come back if it doesn't, if for some reason mine doesn't make a ferment, I'll do it all over again. But I think that this is going to be fine. Every time I've let it die and I made it again, it worked. So the potato flake sourdough starter is in the brown jar and ready to get on the counter. And then I have another little something that I want to share with y'all that's easy to fix and it's a good after school treat for those young ones when they get in. This is just a walkabout banana pudding. And all you use is a snack pack, a little vanilla snack pack pudding, like we've all had growing up and gave our kids probably. Some of y'all may not have. And all you do is open your little pudding up. 
You're going to take a banana and cut it up in pieces that I like to. My son's calling. Hold on. All you're going to need is a hunch snack pack pudding. I got off the phone, by the way. And I've already taken the lid off of mine. You're going to take your banana. And you're going to cut it in little bitty pieces. Now, I just cut it in half, and then I cut those pieces in little pieces. You're going to drop that down in there. This is rocket science, y'all. Stir it around. The kids will just love it because they're getting banana pudding in five minutes. You don't have to cook everything. Then I like to get the little mini vanilla wafers. And you're just going to put you some vanilla wafers down in it here and there. And I could have already stopped this presentation because y'all see where it's going. But it's, it's good. Now, if you have a squirt of that... Um, whipped cream that you just put on there, that would be good on the top, but I don't have any of it, so I'm just going to put a little bit of bananas on the top, and here's our walking banana pudding. Y'all need to make some for your kids and grandkids. And you know, it don't taste like homemade pudding, but um, it's a good little snack. And the good thing about it, you can eat the rest of that banana, and you can just make one if you need to, or however many you need to make. A kid's party, fix you a pretty little pan with ice in it and set these down in it, and um, they'll keep for a while and you don't have to worry about anything, and maybe put a cherry on the top. Please those kids and the big and little kids, I like it too. Okay, now we've got our starter on the cabinet, We've got our pudding idea in our head. We've had rain and we're gonna get some more and we're very thankful for it. And I'm getting my fall, some of my plants pulled out of my beds out there where I can get my fall stuff going. I had bought four little four by fours when they went on sale real cheap at Northern Tools. I was in the store one day and it wasn't advertised. It was an unadvertised sale. So I got four of those little half as big ones and Jordan put them together for me recently, so I'm going to have plenty of room to plant all my turnip greens, mustard greens, collard greens, and kale, and Swiss chard, and the stuff that I want to plant for the fall. Carrots and beets. I'm going to plant some green beans. And when I get everything prepared out there, I did buy me a few tomato plants, but not a whole bunch. I'm going to see how they do between now and 1st of December. Um, I'll, take, I'll take the camera out there and show y'all what I've got done when I get my my prep work done a little bit better. But anyway, y'all, my son is up north of Dallas and he went to Sam's and he said that there was no chicken, uh, no, he named two or three things that the chef was empty. And at the other store there was a limit of two. So all this stuff we're hearing in the news and all these people that call themselves preppers and all of that, there's a little bit of truth to it. So y'all get you some stuff in your pantry where you'll have it when it's not on the shelves. And like I've told you before, if it is on the shelves, it's gonna cost you a fortune because it's not going the short supply ups the price. So you need to you need to be paying attention and don't forget, get the stuff you need for your holiday goodies, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Go ahead and pick you up some candy for your Halloween kids. It may not be available then. You might not have the gas to go to the store and get it. Our gas prices are down a little bit, though. That helps. But I'm just saying, prepare yourself for whatever may happen. Because it don't look like good stuff's going to happen too fast. I know this video is kind of short, and I'm not um, making a big old dish like I usually do. But the, we had to get our starter going where we could make our bread. And I wanted to share this with y'all since school has started and those kids maybe come home wanting a little snack. This is not a real unhealthy snack for them and they'll feel like they've had a really good treat. So y'all make you some banana pudding that you can walk around and eat. And the best thing about it, you can throw the dish away. You don't have to wash it. The good Lord bless and keep y'all and I'll be back in a day or two with something that'll fill your tummy up and keep it full.